Oh, you twat. Put the wrong freaking thing on the freaking end of it. As always, not doing a job once, but doing it twice or three times. I freaking hate wood filler. Don't do a van build like this. It's not recommended. How exciting is this? The first time cooking in the van. My goodness me. I better be careful with these. Otherwise, I'm literally going to have no fingers left. We have heat. Oh, for heaters. Oh, van life. Cooking, I have missed you. So, welcome back to yet another video on the van build. I promise you, we are almost at the end of it. I know for some of you, you'll be very sad, but this week and today, want to try and get the last final changes done. So, those jobs are going to include installing pistons, catches, adding silicon to the cupboards to stop everything sliding about, what else have we got? Oh yeah, paint the cupboards, get all that finished off. Loads of random little jobs just to get this van almost finished as a feather is just coming inside. <laughs> anyway, the first job is going to be to install some pistons onto my overhead um, cupboard above the bed. Reason for that, I've got four hinges holding it up, but... Oh Jesus Christ, that was loud. Um, even four hinges doesn't hold it up because it is a big heavy door no idea how much it weighs but as you can see it's pretty long and girthy i have a feeling these are not going to work because they're not long enough but they were the only ones that screwfix actually sold how the hell do they go oh god almighty they're strong blimey why have i got two of these things how the hell does this thing bloody go? Oh, you twat. Put the wrong freaking thing on the freaking end of it. Ah, oh, you bastard. At least it holds up. That's good. Oh, bollocks. Well, that's good, isn't it? I can't close it now. <laughs> oh my God. So how the hell do I work this up then? This is just ridiculous. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, baby. Oh shit, it's popped out. Okay, I need longer screws, but it works because it popped out of here. Right, longer screws and we're almost there. That well, ain't gonna go anywhere. We have lift off. We have a door that holds up, which is great news. How long has that taken me in real life? Not edited. Yeah, we're talking 30 minutes to install one gas strut, but nevertheless, it's in. I've got holes galore inside my cupboard now, but I don't really care because it'll all be hidden. Ah. <laughs> I've done it. 45 minutes later, two gas struts installed. So now my bedroom cupboard door can actually hold up by itself. That is a job ticked off the mental checklist. Happy days. Whilst we're on a bit of a roll with this cupboard, the next thing that I want to install are some magnetic catches. The reason for that is when I'm driving, it goes like that, which is obviously very annoying. So just bought these off Amazon. I'll leave a link to everything in the description. So I believe how it works is you install one on the bottom here, one on the actual door so that obviously when you're driving, they stay in place and don't rattle about. Okay, this is what they look like. Just. Oh God, it's strong. Ah, right, you screw this onto one side and then you screw this onto the other side and then when they meet together, bam, catches it nice and closed. I'll try one just because then I can use the other one for that cupboard. Why won't you go down, you twat? That goes on there. Then you put this sticky thing on there. 
brilliant. The sticky stuff isn't sticky enough to pull it off. I'm trying to mark where I need to screw the magnetic thing on, but it's not sticking to it. That is really going to stop them rattling when I'm driving, so I need to order two more for that cupboard. Going to install the second one just for good luck. There we go. Okay, we're on like Donkey Kong. Well, at least I should have biceps by the time I keep opening and closing this. The next thing I'm now debating doing, or I'm debating whether just to be lazy and leave it, is I need to lower this TV down. I can't tilt the TV forward anymore and you get a load of reflection and it's just not the right height when you're lying there with your eye level. So, I'm just debating if I can be bothered to move it down or not because I'm not sure currently if I regret getting this TV because in the future I'd like to get a new iPad Pro 12 inch or something and then I can just put mounts all over the place because an iPad has a much better 4K screen or a retina screen. I can use an iPad for Google Maps when I'm driving with different mounts and attachments everywhere. But an iPad Pro is like, I don't even know how much they cost, probably about a thousand pounds. This was a hundred pounds, this TV. I've got the Roku uh, Now TV stick. And I don't really think I'm gonna be watching a lot of TV in summer anyway. As always, not doing a job once, but doing it twice or three times. But the only reason that I know this TV is too high is because I've used it and I've used the van. So, as I always say, go out and use things and learn how things feel and fit and then you'll have to make adjustments as I'm having to do today. This is great. It means I've got more holes to wood fill in, which I did that a couple of days ago with all of the screw holes here and here, which is why it looks a bit crappy, but I'm gonna fill that in and paint it all today. But I'm gonna to have to fill these in as well. Just to have a quick test of that. If somebody is sat here, is that in the way? Not really, it's not too bad actually. And if I'm lying in bed, is this a better angle? It's quite cool to be fair, just to have a swivel TV, but the iPad would be even cooler. But I don't wanna spend that kind of money at the minute. I freaking hate wood filler. Go in the holes and stay there. That is an absolute mess. Right, while we wait for that wood filler to dry on the other cupboard, time to get these ones finished off. So, sometime last week, I just came and filled in all the screw holes on the sides and underneath, which already makes it look a lot, lot tidier. But today, I'm gonna paint this the same color as the green sage here. I'll time lapse all the painting and stuff because it's not that interesting, but uh, yeah, let's get this finished and this painted. And then the cupboards are finito. Actually, no, they're not. There's one more job that I want to do afterwards. I can't be bothered to paint the insides of them because I just can't be bothered. So just the outsides to match in and blend them with the walls and then they're done. I've finished painting the first cupboard green and I'm not sure if I like it. There's too much green in here now. I actually preferred the normal color of the ply. It blends in better, but... I don't know, it's too much green for me. Welcome back to the second day of tinkering jobs. Last night I've slept on my decision of painting these cupboards green and I've decided I don't like it, it looks too sludgy and we're gonna make a change. So this morning I went to the fabric shop and I bought some Hessian fabric material which currently I think I'm gonna put on the bottom of the cupboard first just to see how that looks and then potentially the side. Um, Yet again, I've wasted time filling in the screw holes because I'm now gonna have to find the screw holes that I had originally, which are now covered in wood filler, take them out, spray 
and glue on the hessian to the underneath basically what i'm trying to say is i've wasted so much time because i've wood filled pointless job i've primed the wood pointless job and i painted it green pointless job because now i'm going to cover it all in bloody hessian so it's the only way to uh, kind of figure out what you like and don't like is by actually doing it and then realizing how oh, I don't like it. So that's today's job and plan. Let's crack on with it. Luckily, I can still see roughly whereabouts the screw holes are. Ah, oh, this is going to get so messy, isn't it? Oh, there's going to be wood filler all over the floor. Gotcha. Don't do a van build like this. It's not recommended. Hopefully people learn from my mistakes. I really do hope that you take some learning steps from watching me cock up and waste time and money. Uh, oh, maybe not. That's it. Oh. 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 That'll do, donkey. Right. Oh. That was bull egg. Time to uh, sand this down. Take the LED strip out put some hessian on top of it all and get it all looking nice and pretty. Thankfully I've got a spare LED strip because I trod and broke the one I've just used. Well, I don't know if it's broken, but better to put a new one in just in case. And it's the perfect, perfect fit. I tell you what, I'm pretty happy with that. Neil, you'd be proud of me. That actually looks neat and tidy. Obviously, all of the mistakes and everything are completely hidden. Hidden? Hidden by the Hessian. So, now all it is, screw it back on, see how it looks and potentially do the other side. Hopefully I should be able to go in the existing screw holes. <laughs> oh, this looks brilliant. Yeah, that looks yeah, really that nice. Looks cool. And this, what is it? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's good. Drop that. Oops, sorry. So this is a bit of a reality check for you. I just put the camera down, or not down, just wasn't recording because I was just gonna solder back in the LED strip, but of course I've soldered the black to the red and the red to the black. So, cocked that one up, so now I've gotta redo that. Anyway, see you in a second when I get this LED strip wired in the correct way round. Well, this is the moment of truth. Please excuse my dodgy wiring, but everything works. I have run out of uh, heat shrink, so I've just taped it temporarily. I say temporarily. That's permanent. I am not going to be bothered to tidy that up. I will, of course, clip these cables at the back here, but let us look at this now. Look how much better that looks, in my opinion. Completely breaks up the green. Now all I'm trying to decide is whether I do the side panel as well. Oh. Or I just leave it. Let me know in the comments what you think, but you'll obviously see in this video what I've decided to do. I might leave it for now and then if I feel like it needs changing in the future then I can always change it. I've decided I'm going to do the sides hessian as well. It's all got to match otherwise it just, it will just look better, trust me. First time in a long time, we're pretty much ready to start adding some final, final touches. I know I literally say that in every video, but when I say final touches now, I mean some homely, warm kind of vibes, just to really personalize this and make it myself, because at the moment, 
it's quite bare and barren but let me know what you think of the cupboards i personally really love it although i did edit half of this video and then thought oh actually maybe i do prefer the green on the side but hey ho everything matches now the cupboards look amazing especially with the led light underneath the last few days have been quite long just trying to get these last few tedious jobs done but i thought tonight why not let's do a bit of a cook up inside the van so yes we're going back to the good old days we're going to be cooking some chicken fajitas i'm absolutely starving but before that i want to show you this awesome product and something that i cannot wait to use every time that i'm cooking inside the van and it's just going to be awesome how exciting is this the first time cooking in the van like this loads of people question where's my chopping board area here is my chopping board area extendable worktop baby it's all coming to life obviously before i start cooking I need some cutlery and some knives. And thankfully, I've just stocked up the kitchen with a few basics for tonight. But today's video is actually sponsored by Kamikoto Knives, which I'm absolutely ecstatic about because they're made from Japanese steel. Oh, oh baby! Some high quality Japanese steel knives to be added to the van. This is literally a dream just to have some high quality chef knives, even though I'm not the best cook. But look at that they come in this awesome little box here which is nice and heavy duty and obviously like this ash kind of look to it which means it's great for a present or something look at these bad boys my goodness me i better be careful with these otherwise i'm literally going to have no fingers left they are going to be sharp they're beautiful so these knives are used by michelin star chefs all around the world not sure i'm quite a michelin star chef However, when it comes to chicken fajitas, find somebody else who's better at cooking them than me. Anyway, let's get on, use these bad boys because they look sick. Chicken licking, baby. Peppers, and we got some onions. Keeping it basic tonight, just want a quick, easy meal. That was literally like cutting through butter. Watch your fingers, otherwise I literally won't have any fingers left. We have heat. Oh yeah. I'm not exaggerating. You probably think I am, but that is without doubt the sharpest knife I've ever used. Did you know, by the way, that each knife comes individually inspected and comes with a lifetime guarantee. So, you can be sure they're gonna last you a long, long time. In with the chicken. Right, whilst we wait for the chicken and veg to brown off and then I can put the spices in and get these fajitas in my stomach because I'm so hungry right now. I wanna let you guys know that Kamikoto has loads and loads of special offers and things going on right now and is offering my viewers, if you're watching this video, an extra $50 off any purchase if you use the discount code WILL50 at checkout. And that is, bear in mind, on top of any special offers that they currently have. I'll leave a link in the description of this video to Kamikoto Knives, so make sure you go and check them out. Japanese steel knives used by Michelin star chefs and now used by Will cooking fajitas in the van. Thanks for Kamikoto for sponsoring this video. Time to get this finished off and get eating. If anybody else buys anything different other than El Paso, there is something seriously, seriously wrong with you. And smoky barbecue is actually my least favorite. I prefer roasted pepper, but it's all they had. So this will have to do for tonight. Dinner for one, yes please. Right, we're going in with the chicken first. Not gonna overdo that. We're then gonna go on with the cheese to melt. We're then gonna chuck a couple of slices of this. We're then gonna go for some Nando's peri peri garlic sauce. <laughs> Oh, fajitas, oh, van life, cooking, I have missed you. I literally, genuinely cannot remember the last time I cooked a meal. It must have been well over a month ago. I am gonna get this in my stomach, chill out this evening, 
and then crack on tomorrow for some more jobs on the van but this time we're doing some more mechanics which uh, should be entertaining for you guys yet again it's a job i've never done so thank you guys so much for watching thank you for continuing support me the channel the videos i hope they're bringing you some sort of value or laughs mm. oh, my. oh my i can confirm that chorizo works very well with chicken fajitas thank you guys for watching sorry for talking with my mouth full and i'll catch you damn that's good in the next video peace out